Uh, a big hi everyone. I uh, hope you have been having a very great day. So, uh, in this session, I would like to talk on AC voltage controllers. So, this topic, AC voltage controllers, is very, very simple, but yet it's pretty important. So, in this session, let us deal with just that. So, uh, before I uh, 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 delve into the topic, let me ask you a few things. Like, uh, you get um, AC uh, current in your houses, you get uh, supply in your houses, your plug points. What is the voltage in that? It is how many volts and what is the frequency of that? So, for every uh, supply, for every house, in every place, there is a voltage supply and there is a supply frequency. So, what if that specific voltage is not suitable to uh, meet your needs what if you want a different voltage what if you want uh, a higher voltage or a lower voltage or what if you don't want that frequency what if you want a different frequency of course frequency change has uh, nothing to do with uh, AC voltage controllers these are only as the name suggests they are voltage controllers and cycloconverters are frequency con uh, frequency changes so uh, just understand this AC voltage controllers cycloconverters so AC voltage controllers or uh, converters are what we are going to study today and this has nothing to do with the frequency so uh, let me just define your AC voltage controller in a basic manner. The device which converts the voltage from high or a low level to another level without changing the frequency is your AC voltage control so let me just uh, tell you uh, AC voltage controllers the uh, we have been using thyristors and diodes for quite a long time so uh, this AC voltage controlling can be done by using thyristors or by using triads or even by using some diodes but in our case uh, let us use thyristors. Uh, let me just explain the arrangement. When you want a full complete conversion, let us uh, deal with full converters. So let us deal with the basic, uh, not the very very basic, let us deal with the single phase full controlled AC voltage converter. So we will be needing two thyristors, a source and triggering circuits for both the thyristors. So uh, you might ask me and actually uh, some of you have asked, uh, can we use a triac instead of uh, thyristors? Yes, you can use a triac instead of thyristors. Let me draw the circuit diagram. Uh, you should be, you will be better then. So, So this is my uh, circuit diagram. I have two thyristors, I have a voltage source and I have a resistive load. I only have a resistive load. Uh, you can add an inductive load, you can add uh, a lot more. So uh, let us just uh, talk about uh, this is T1 and this is T2. We have T1 and we have T2. So. Uh, 
one uh, doubt which um, most uh, people get is can we use a triac how would it be if you use a triac instead of this all you all that will be there is that's it that's the only difference instead of two thyristor we are using a triac which is very 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 much possible and uh, but the only thing is it is uh, not suitable for higher loads and uh, only uh, good for uh, resistive loads and uh, even if the and very small inductive load so once your inductive load increases and most of your uh, incandescent lamps light bulbs and all the stuff is mostly your it has a lot of inductance in that so when you are having uh, more of inductance or inductive loads then uh, you better use thyristors more you prefer you should prefer thyristors or to triax so now let us deal with thyristors i have two thyristors t1 and t2 i have a voltage source say the source is vs and i have a resistive load and uh, say my resistance is r so uh, now let us observe how the waveforms of this circuit are going to be so uh, the waveforms are probably the most important part in any uh, controller or any circuit so first i wish i had drawn this a little bit uh, to the left anyways i will just try this okay so now this as you can all guess is my supply voltage vs and i have to trigger i have to trigger the thyristors so i have to give the thyristors pulses you all know the triggering circuits so uh, follow the uh, triggering circuit of your choice i am just giving a small gate pulse uh, say for this one i am giving a gate pulse of ig1 and for this one i am giving ig2 very small gate pulse that's it say i want a firing angle of 30 degrees take your own choice if you have 0 degrees also you can do it but when you uh, always if you choose some firing angle you can uh, give some distinction you can show the difference that this is uh, without a lag and this is with some lag so uh, always when you are uh, writing in an exam prefer to provide a firing angle alpha so in my case i am taking alpha is equal to 30 degrees so i am taking alpha is equal to 30 degrees so my first gate pulse for ig1 will be this so this is ig1 and this is ig2 okay uh, i hope uh, this thing is clear so for ig1 i am going to trigger here and here that's it for ig2 this is my positive t1 is my positive uh, is going to conduct in my positive half cycle and my t2 thyristor is going to conduct in the negative half cycle so so this for this you give the triggering at 30 and the next one is going to be at the next cycle right so you don't need so you need not give the triggering during the negative half cycle for t1 however for t2 you have to give the triggering only at negative half cycles only at negative half cycles so this is my thyristor t2 and for my thyristor t2 this is ig2 so at here this at 30 degrees delay i am giving a pulse i have given a pulse and next again for the second negative half cycle with a 30 degrees delay 
I am giving a pulse. So it is always advisable to use a dotted line or anything so that things will be more clear. So this 30 degrees is lag. This is 30 lag. This is 30 lag. This is 30 lag. So this is how your triggering is given. I hope you are clear with how triggering is given. So now comes my voltage and uh, current waveforms. The shape of the voltage and current waveforms are same. Point number one, we are using a purely resistive load. So we need not worry about uh, lag in current because of any inductance. So that is the first point. So voltage and current waveforms will be same. Of course the magnitudes will be different and you will have to calculate the magnitudes. So my waveforms are going to be like this. Up to 30 degrees, let me explain this to you first. Up to 30 degrees, there is no conduction in the thyristor. There is no conduction in the thyristor. So from where will the output come? There will be no output because there is no conduction in the thyristor. So for 30 degrees, the output voltage will be zero up to 30 degrees. Then my triggering pulse is given. Then my pulse is given. Then it is going to rise. Okay. Fine. This is my output voltage. Okay. So my output voltage has uh, uh, for 30 degrees. Up to 30 degrees it has done nothing. There is no output voltage. After 30 degrees it has risen Because my pulse is given at 30 degrees. Okay, so now, so now, this is in my positive half cycle. However, in my negative half cycle also, my T2 thyristor is conducting. So in my negative half cycle, the conduction is like this. It goes like this and goes through T2 and comes. In my positive half cycle, the conduction is through T1. It goes like this and comes back like this. The cycle is like that. And however, in the negative half cycle, it's in the opposite direction. So my T2 is conducting and T1 is conducting in negative and positive half cycles respectively. So even in my negative half cycle, I will have voltage across the load. I'll have voltage across my resistive load because of the thyristor T2. And still for 30 degrees because of my gate pulse delay, I mean after uh, only after this delay, my thyristor will start conducting. Again, the same thing follows for, for the entire cycle. So this is how my voltage waveform is going to look like. My current waveform is also going to look similar. I mean, uh, the voltage and current across, uh, voltage across the load and the current and the load. The waveforms will be similar, will be the same, just like this. The magnitudes will be different, you can calculate the magnitudes. So now, how will my thyristor uh, waveforms look like? See, it's simple. When you are drawing thyristor pulses, when you are drawing, sorry, when you are drawing your thyristor across the thyristor, your waveforms, say this is across T1 and this is across T2. Your voltage will across your thyristor T1 and your voltage across your thyristor T2. So these are your thyristor voltages. Look at the diagram. In your output voltage, in your output voltage, there is no conduction till here. So until then, until then, what has happened to that voltage which you have supplied that goes to the thyristor like this? So this delay, so that triggering angle, your thyristor is eating up here. Okay, so that is how it's going to be. So there won't be anything here. See, during the negative half cycle across thyristor T1, nothing. There won't be anything in thyristor T1. And uh, because, uh, see, both the thyristors, both the thyristors, there is uh, one more thing you need to consider. There is a voltage drop. So, the, when it goes down, when it goes totally down, 
also see that it is a little bit above the line a little bit above your line there is a little difference between your axis and your thyristor voltage waveform whatever you are drawing because that is your voltage drop that's your voltage drop so across your thyristor T1 in the positive half cycle the pulses will be in the positive side in the negative half cycle the pulses will be in the negative side however for your thyristor T2 in your negative half cycle the pulses the voltage waveforms will be upside and in the positive uh, half cycle your voltage waveforms will be downside so this is how they are going to look like Okay, that is your thyristor T1. However, for T2, it is the reverse of this. For T2, it is just the reverse of this. So the thyristor across the thyristor your waveforms are going to be like this your voltage waveforms are going to be like this so this is how the AC voltage controller waveforms look like so this is a single phase AC voltage controller I am just revising a little bit this is a single phase AC voltage controller there are two thyristors T1 and T2 T1 conducts in the positive T2 conducts in the negative half cycles and there is a resistive load, so no need to worry about the difference in the voltage and current waveforms. There is only difference in the magnitude, they look the same. So this Vs is your supply voltage waveform. And these are your triggering pulses. I am giving a 30 degrees delay here, that is why there is a difference. And I need to give only pulses in the positive half cycle for thyristor T1 and gate pulses for thyristor T2 in the negative half cycle of the voltage waveform. So then because of that delay there is no conduction and there is hence there is no voltage waveform in the output voltage. So there is no output voltage during the first 30 degrees and again the next third and again there is always this gap in which there is no conduction taking place. That is why there is no output voltage. So this is how my voltage waveform is going to look like and then here are my voltage waveforms across thyristor T1 and T2 and they are very simple to be drawn. All you need to do is just observe the waveform of this and whatever missing part is there that comes in your T1. And remember for T1 during the positive half cycles the pulses will be up, I mean the voltage waveforms will be up and in the negative down. However, it is the reverse for the thyristor T2 because it conducts in the negative half cycle. So, I uh, hope you found this uh, informative. Have a great day.